Hi, and welcome back to I'm a Happy Enchilada, and thanks for hanging out with us. Now, we've got a great topic today, but before we get to that, I want to briefly and shamelessly plug a couple of my MC gigs. First, the award-winning Bands on the Blackwater, every Friday night through October 29th at 7 p.m. in beautiful downtown Milton, Florida, on the banks of the Blackwater River, and bring a chair, and the Opelika Songwriters Festival in Opelika, Alabama, Friday through Sunday, October 15th through 17th. And go to Facebook for more info on both of those events, and see you there. So now, let's get into our topic. It's compromise. Ooh. If you're married or ever been in a relationship, you probably experienced the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat in that area, right? Well, it's not supposed to be either win or lose in compromise, but the art of each being willing to give a little ground for a workable solution to a problem for all involved, which can be easier said than done. First, let's see what compromise means in simple terms. It's an agreement over a dispute reached by each side changing or giving up some demands after much argument. An example of compromise is a teenager. He wants a midnight curfew while his parents want 10 p.m. Hmm, well they end up agreeing on 11 o'clock, yeah. Common goal of compromise is to settle an issue in the best interest of everyone involved. How important is compromise? Hmm. Good compromises help you and your partner grow as a team. They foster trust, accountability, consistency, and security in your relationship. Now here's something to watch out for when trying to reach a compromise with someone. A personality clash can occur when two or more people find themselves in conflict, not over a particular issue or incident, but due to a fundamental incompatibility in their personalities, their approach to things, or their style of life. Or it may be they have a high conflict personality, which is just a description of conflict behavior, a pattern of repeated behavior in a conflict, and a good tip to avoid trying to give them insight to their own behavior. Yeah, it'll just blow up and trigger defensiveness. And avoid focusing on the past as well. Ouch. That's darn good advice. And check this out. What should you not compromise in a relationship like this? The most important thing you shouldn't compromise in a relationship is your self-esteem. You should never ever be with someone who makes you feel bad about yourself in any way. Let me repeat that. You should never be with someone who makes you feel bad about yourself in any way. You know, if I had taken that message to heart and applied it to relationships in my life, it would have been a much more peaceful journey. But anyone out there that can relate, and in my eyes, the most important thing in the area of compromise is to never compromise your values. You maintain your integrity at all times, no matter what the consequences are. You respect yourself as much as those who are important to you. And speak truth, even if it affects your relationship. Okay, so I think we have a pretty good handle on what compromise looks like in a relationship, right? So now, let's look at ways we can improve our compromising skills, shall we? Here's some tips for successful compromise in a marriage or love relationship. Communicate your needs clearly. Listen without interrupting. That's not always easy. Carefully weigh your options. Put yourself in your partner's shoes. Consider what is fair. Make a decision and stick with it. And a couple more, just for good measure. Let go of having to be right. Ooh, 
and pick your battles, yes. So we're about out of time. And if you need more info, there's a ton more online. So check it out. Well, that's all I've got. So until next time, God bless and be a happy enchilada. Bye.